New post-war old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents... Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. What's the reason for the water seeping under that bathroom door, Mr. Nigel? Why, I, I don't know, Mr. Carter. Then we better find out. Great Scott, it looks like the Johnstown flood. Good heavens. Oh, Nick, look. Yes. There's a girl in the tub. And she's been weighted down with a suitcase. And now, the case of the candidate's corpse. Today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter. Brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. Although it is only 10 o'clock in the morning, Nick Carter has a prospective client in his office. A client whose pompous dignity is a bit startling. Sir... I am the Honorable Wilton Nigel. Oh, yes, yes. You're a politician, aren't you, Mr. Nigel? I, Mr. Carter, am a public servant. Statesman would be an apter term than politician. Uh, uh, won't you sit down, Mr. Nigel? Oh, thank you. Mr. Carter, I want you to protect me. Protect you? From what? I'm scheduled to be the speaker of the day at a stupendous political rally this afternoon in Springville. Uh, that's about 20 miles from here. Oh, I read about that. It's going to be an all-day celebration. There'll be a carnival and barbecue and fireworks. Yes, indeed. And my address is to be the feature event of the day. Uh, about 50,000 um, constituents are expected to hear me. And uh, you want me to protect you from them? Certainly not. Mr. Carter, there's a plot afoot. The, uh, honorable Leonard Squire, my opponent, is tied up with a gangster element. And they'll stop at nothing to discredit me. What do they threaten to do? Well, they wouldn't dare threaten me. My information comes from a, a roundabout source. Information regarding what, Mr. Nigel? You're telling me practically nothing. All I know is that something's, uh, up. And that's not any more definite. You'll have to trust my judgment that you're needed, Mr. Carter. And I'll pay you $5,000 to keep me from being discredited at this rally. No, oh, thank you, Mr. Nigel. If you'd give me the whole story, maybe I could help you. But under the Then you refuse to take my case? That's entirely up to you. I regret your decision. I thought I could count on you to help me. If you change your mind, my office still open. Good day. Honestly, of all the pompous old funny duddies He's pompous now, Patsy, but it's obvious he expects to be deflated. The man's really frightened about something. I wonder what... Why, well, you don't think anybody would try to hurt him physically, do you? I don't know. I can't think of a better spot for skullduggery than one of those old-fashioned political rallies. Well... Bands, crowds, excitement, noise. You know, Patsy, just out of curiosity, we're going to Springville. Nick, is this a political rally or a country fair? Well, it's supposed to be a political rally, Patsy. Oh, look! But... They even have a sideshow. Yes, with an oriental dancer who certainly should draw the crowds. Even if the Honorable Mr. Nigel doesn't. Oh, gee. He must be some politician if he has to resort to shows like this to get folks to listen to him. Yeah. Hey, come on. Right, yeah, let's listen to this barker. He's just starting his spiel. Gather up closer, gentlemen. On the inside of this tent, you will see Rosita, that dainty little oriental dancer doing a famous landslide dance. It's a sensation, gentlemen. It's daring. It's delightful. Okay, Rosita, go on inside. All right, gentlemen, step right up to the ticket booth. Have your money ready. All right, I'll take two, please, miss. Thank you, How much? I'll take one, miss, please. Go on, Rosita, hurry up. No, I ain't going in, Harry. Not till I get the money you owe me. Well, I ain't got it. You got more dough in your pocket today than you ever had in your life before. Now, look, Oh, I'm Rosita. tired of being a sap. I'm leaving, Harry. What? Why, I ought to slap you, silly. Where do you think you're going? I'm going to the hotel to see a guy with real money. <laughs> you're bluffing. Yeah? Ask the Honorable Wilton Nigel if I'm bluffing you, cheap chiseler. But you can't do this to me. What am I going to do? There's a couple of costumes in my dressing room, wise guy. Do the dance yourself. Hey, Patsy, did you hear what that dancing girl said about Wilton Nigel? I heard it, but I still don't believe it. You know, I think I'll go and have a talk with Mr. Nigel myself. But I thought you weren't going to take his case. Oh, I might have known you couldn't resist. Uh-huh. In other words, you don't want to come to the hotel with me? And listen to old windbag Nigel, I should say not. I'll amuse myself here where there's something interesting going on. Okay. 
Where will I find you when I'm through talking to him? I'll be somewhere near here. Oh, um, if you need Rosita there, give her my regards. <laughs> Yes? Is this Mr. Wilton, Nigel Sweet? It is, and who may I ask are you? I'm Nick Carter. I'd like to talk to Mr. Nigel. So do I, but he isn't here. You know where he is? If I knew, I'd be there too. Oh? And who, if I may ask, are you? I'm Mrs. Wilton, Nigel. Oh, you just wait till I get my hands on that man. Is something wrong, Mrs. Nigel? Wrong? There certainly is. You see, he and I went to a political breakfast and... Yes, I know. When I was here earlier, the desk clerk told me he was at that breakfast. So I went there to see him, but was told that he'd already left. He certainly did. When we were about half through, I left the table to make a phone call. And then when I got back, he'd disappeared. You know where he went? No, and nobody at the breakfast seemed to know either. So I waited for him. But when he didn't come back, I finally returned here alone. So, uh... You have no idea where your husband might be now, then? No, but two different bellboys told me that a woman came up here this morning. A young woman in a scanty oriental costume, even had a veil over her face. A woman who had... How long have you been here? Only a few minutes. Why? And how long ago did your husband leave the breakfast? About an hour ago, more or less. Oh, there he is now. Oh, hello, Stella, dear. Sergeant Matheson, this is... Hey, my wife, Nick uh, Carter. Marty. Hey, what are you doing here? Mr. Nigel told the chief you turned him down. I did, but... Hey, aren't you outside your bailiwick, Matty? <laughs> well, it's my day off, and Mr. Nigel's a personal friend of the chief. And Sergeant so I... Matheson volunteered to be my uh, guest at this great political rally, Mr. Carter. Uh, now, yeah, wait yeah. a minute, Mr. Nigel. Uh, hmm? What's that water coming from under your bathroom door? Water from hey, under the It looks like you need a plumber, Mr. Nigel. You better see what's the matter. Great Scott, it looks like the Johnstown flood. Oh, good heavens, you forgot to turn off the water after you shaved this morning, Wilton. I'll turn it off right now. Well, Stella, that water's coming from the tub, but I didn't take a bath this morning. Are you sure neither of you saw a girl in this hotel suite this morning? I'm sure I didn't, but I'm not at all sure what Wilton saw. Oh, now, Stella. Hey, 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 what's, what's all this about a girl? There's one here, all right, in the bottom of the tub, weighted down with a suitcase. Oh, for Pete's sake. Oh, a girl in my bathtub? <gasps> Mary. Yeah. You know anybody in the local police force? Sure I do. Why? You better give him a ring. Tell him what's happened. Okay, I will. Uh, look, Nick, uh, what do you figure killed her? That'll be up to the coroner, but whatever it was, it's obviously murder. Murder? Mr. Nigel, will you come here, please? Well, well, all right. Ever see this girl before? Well, never. Most decidedly not. Mrs. Nigel. Oh, dear. I can't. Oh, oh what a disgraceful costume. Uh, it looks like she was a dancer from that outfit she's got on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll go see the local police chief, Nick. Oh, but if, if there's any publicity about this, it, it can ruin my whole campaign. Oh, yeah? Well, you got more in the campaign to worry about now. This is murder. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, oh, Mr. Carter, who on earth could have done a thing like this? I don't know, Mr. Nigel. Both you and your wife had the opportunity to kill this woman. But that's preposterous. You think I'd have anything to do with a woman like that? Why, she's from the carnival, isn't she, Mr. Carter? She is. And I happen to know she left the carnival grounds close to two hours ago. Where are you then? I have the political breakfast, and I haven't been back here since. And you, Mrs. Nigel, where were you? I, uh, why, I was, uh, oh, oh. Carter, catch her, she's fainted. I've got her. Oh, good. Okay, put her on the Davenport. I'll, I'll give you a hand. Oh, easy now. Now, there. She'll be all right in a minute. You better get her some water. Oh, well, of course, of course, Mr. Carter. Mr. Nigel, would you have any idea why your wife fainted? Why, no, unless it's the shock of finding a dead body in our bathtub. It wouldn't have been because she didn't want to tell me where she was, would it? Oh, ridiculous. She was at the breakfast with me. She there all the time? Why, uh, uh, You may as well tell me, Nigel. I can easily find out from those who were there. Uh, yes. Well, no, Mr. Carter. Partway through the meal, she excused herself to make a phone call. How long was she gone? Well, as a matter of fact, when I left to meet Sergeant Matheson, she still hadn't come back. I see. Well, Mr. Nigel, as soon as we're sure your wife's all right, you and I are going to see whether we can find out why that girl's body is in your bathtub. You're going to this... this carnival sideshow? I am, Nigel. But, Carter, I can't be seen in a place like this palace of oriental wonders. Don't worry. We aren't going in. Thank heavens. The man who runs the show can give us the information I want. Oh, uh, pardon me, mister. 
Did you have a girl named Rosita working for you earlier today? Did I? Why, I still got a chance. Rosita, the snappiest little oriental dancer this side of Panama. There'll be a new show in just a few minutes, boys. Listen, mister. I had Harry Hall, boys. Outstanding producer, high-class educational and refined entertainment. And you're sure Rosita's still here? Why, sure, I'm sure. You'll see the little lady in all the glory in just a minute, boys. Give the music to the needle, Louie. All right, lucky, 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 lucky. Men, I'm about to show you the most beautiful bit of feminine poker tune you've ever seen. Rosita, the famous Oriental dancer. Come on out, Rosita. Why, Mr. Carter, isn't that your gun? It's Patsy. Patsy Bowen may be able to pass as Rosita, the oriental dancer, to the satisfaction of the public, but not to the satisfaction of Nick Carter. We'll find out the reason for Patsy's masquerade in just a moment. Now back to The Case of the Candidate's Corpse, today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. In the dancer's dressing room, Matty, who has rejoined Nick, is eyeing High Hat Harry Hall, owner of the Palace of Oriental Wonders, with plenty of suspicion. Nick is still indignant at having found Patsy in a carnival dance act. Don't be stuffy, Nick. I was trying to help you. But, Patsy, I don't see how that... Look, after his dancer left, Mr. Hall was going to close up his show and leave town. And I thought you wouldn't want to let him get away, that's all. And you did right, Patsy. Thanks. Now, uh, Hall, suppose you start talking. Why did Rosita leave your show? Uh, she was just a dame with ideas, I guess. Yeah? You didn't owe her any money. Who, me? Owe the help money? She said you did. And she also said you had more money today for the first time since she'd known you. Where'd you get it? Oh, listen, smart guy. No, you listen. The local police have asked me to work with them. You mean that damn sick the cops on me while I'll slug that... Oh, no, you won't. Harry, she's dead. Come again? I said she's dead. Her body's in the morgue right now. I don't believe it. You will. You'll even get a chance to look at it. Meanwhile, I'm going to take a look through Rosita's stuff. You won't find anything, Sergeant. No, why not, Patsy? Well, that's another reason I took Rosita's place. I wanted to see whether there were any letters or anything that involved with Mr. Nigel. Well, good for you, Patsy. What did you find? Nothing. Just extra costumes, makeup, the, the things you expect to find. Oh, speaking of costumes, Patsy... You better get into your street clothes. That oriental costume. Oh, what's you... the matter? Don't you think I look cute in this outfit? I uh, sure do, baby. As a matter of fact, Patsy, it doesn't look well on you at all. Well, I like that. Why not? Because the suntan pattern on your back doesn't match the lines of the costume. Uh, oh. This oriental costume is cut very differently from your bathing suit around the shoulders. Say, I guess you're right. I noticed the same thing on another girl just a short time ago. Uh, look, Hall. Uh, uh, what's this Rosita's home address? Well, you got me there, Sarge. Oh, come now, Hall. She worked for you. Didn't she have any references? Uh, on a show like this, you don't ask for references. You take whoever you can get. Matty? Yeah, Nick. I think we'll give Hall a chance to spend some time with Mr. and Mrs. Nigel. What do you mean? I mean he's going back to the hotel and stay with them while you and I go to the city. Oh, for the love of Pete, Nick. Nick. There are labels in the girls' costumes, and the costumer may have a record of the sales. Of course. A good idea, Patsy. Uh, We can start our search there. Yeah, but look, what if Hall here tries to take a powder while we're gone? Have one of the local policemen keep an eye on him, Matty, and see that he doesn't get away. Patsy. Yes, Nick? For the last time, will you get out of that costume and into some decent clothes? You've got work to do. Oh. A lot of good it'll do us to make this trip, Nick. Well, we already got Rosita's address in the costumer, didn't we? Yeah, we already know her address, the morgue. Yeah. The costumes were sold to a dance team called the Casal Sisters. Yeah, yeah, and we'll find the address, and it'll be a theatrical boarding house where they won't even remember Rosita. Oh, yeah? This is the place right here. Huh? And it doesn't look like any cheap theatrical boarding house to me. No. Hey, you're right. This is a pretty fair-looking apartment building at that thing. Now, let's see, let's see. Hey, we're in luck. Oh, Yeah. Here's the nameplate, see? Oh. Roxanne Cassell, apartment 1C. Yeah. Okay, press the buzzer. <clears throat> More luck, Matty. Somebody's home. Yeah. <laughs> Good. You looking for me? You, Roxanne Cassell? Sure. What of it? Got something on you to say? Hey, just a minute. Your voice. Hey, you're Rosita Cassell. You're wrong there, mister. I'm Roxanne. 
What's up? Was Rosita your sister? No, we just worked together as a dance team. Then we had a fight and split up. Yeah? Last I heard, she was dancing in a cheap little carny show. Well, what's she done now? She's been murdered. Murdered? Sure. What? Was it a man who killed her? What? Why do you ask that? Well, she was running around with a guy before she left town. A big shot. He got sore at her and she was afraid of him. Scared half to death. You know the man's name? Oh, it was a kind of funny name. Something like uh, Milton or Wilton. Uh, or... Was it Wilton Nigel? That's it. I always wondered what a guy with a name like that would look like. Well, you're going to find out, Miss Cassell. And fast. <laughs> Patsy, I thought I told you nobody was to leave this hotel room. Where are Mrs. Nigel and Mr. Hall? They're with the local police, Nick. How come? Well, they wanted Hall to identify the body, and they wanted to question Mrs. Nigel about leaving that political breakfast before it was over. Sergeant Matheson, are the police questioning Stella because they think that she... Look, Mr. Nigel, this is a murder case. They'll be questioning you, too, when they hear what this young lady here has to say. What? I don't know her, do I, miss? No, but you knew Rosita, all right. And knowing you didn't do her no good, either. That's preposterous. They brought you all the way out from the city just to accuse me of murder? Nobody's accused you of murder, Nigel. All I know is what Rosita said about a guy named Nigel. Oh, please, please, if Stella should come back and hear... Stella, dear, you... Why, what's happened to your hat? What's happened to my hat, indeed? What's happened to me? Mrs. Nigel, where's Hall? Oh, where is he? When we got out of the car in front of the police station, that man literally threw me against the police and got away. Got away? Crazy fool. I only hope the police don't find him. What? Oh, now, see here, Natty, if they catch up with him, they may shoot to kill. You couldn't blame him either, except that he isn't guilty. He isn't? No. And Miss Roxanne Casal is going to help me prove it. Me? I don't get it. You will. We're going to open his Palace of Oriental Wonders show with you taking the part of Rosita. Well, no, I'd be afraid. You needn't be. Maddie and I'll be there. And I have a hunch Hall will show up, too. His curiosity won't let him stay away. But if he's a murderer and thinks I'm trying to trap him, why, he... You'll be protected. Patsy, is the costume you wore still in the tent dressing room? It should be. Let's go, then. Well, Mr. Carter, you want Stella and me to come, too? No, no, it's not necessary. Now, look, Nick, a guy like Hall won't fall for that stunt. He's been around too much. Maybe not, Matty, but it's worth a trial. Now, look, he ain't going to be thinking about the carnival. He'll be trying to get out of town fast. In his car? No, the police will be watching that. My hunch is he'll head for the freight yards. And that's where I'm going right now. But it's so hot in this tent, Wilton. Stella, dear, we have to stay here. Mr. Carter said so. And I suppose we have to watch that woman do a dance. I'm afraid you do, Mrs. Nigel. She should be about ready. Patsy's helping her get into the costume now. I don't see why anybody would need help to get into a skimpy thing like that. Oh, Mr. Carter, look. Coming down the aisle. Sergeant Matheson and... And Mr. Mr. Hall. Oh, wait till I get my hands on that man. Come on, Hall. Come on. Bring him back alive. That's me. (laughs) Okay, Nick. Now, who was right, Look, huh? what's the idea? I ain't done nothing. No? no? Hall, who paid you to bring your show to Nigel's political rally? Nobody. The police are going to search you, Hall. If they find any substantial sum of money, you'll be in the spot. What do you mean? I heard your dancing girl say you hadn't been able to pay her, but that you had some money today for the first time in weeks. Okay, so what if I was paid to bring the show here? I wasn't told to do nothing crooked, just bring in the show and play here at the rally. Why? Look, I don't ask questions. If somebody wants to give me a grand with no strings tied to my it... My opponent was responsible for that. He wanted to make my political rally look cheap and discredit me. Mr. Sal's already, Nick. Fine, I'll signal you when to start. Okay. What goes on here? We're going to have a private performance, Hall. All right, sit down, everybody. Go ahead, Patsy. What about the music? Look, Hall, now that you're here, suppose you play the organ, just the way you did for Rosita. Well, why should I? This ain't Get no... busy, Hall. Do as Nick says. Oh, okay. Hold the curtains, Patsy. Right. Oh, good heavens. Of all the disgraceful... Quiet, please, Mrs. Nigel. Wait a minute, Miss Casal. Stay in the center of the stage. Don't try to talk to Hall. I said don't... What did she say to you, Hall? I just told him to play a little faster, that's all. Are you sure you didn't tell him how you murdered the woman we found in the bathtub? What? Me murder Rosita? Yes, you. You're crazy. I wasn't even here. I was in the city. Oh, no, you weren't. You were right here in town. What? 
Your name may be Roxanne, but you've been working for Hall under the name of Rosita. But it was the real Rosita who was murdered. You don't know what you're talking about. How about it, Hall? Is this the girl who worked for you or not? Uh... No, no, this ain't the one. I think she is. And now look, Nick, if Harry says she ain't the one, how are you going to prove different? Nobody else ever saw that dancer without her veil but him. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Carter. Prove I was the one who was working for Hall. All right, I will. Your costume's a dead giveaway. What a... Huh? The suntan pattern on your back, it fits the cut of your costume perfectly. Uh, come again? Standing out in the sun every afternoon doing the ballyhoo on your show hall, Roxanne got a tan that fits the lines of the costume she wore. The same costume she's wearing now. But the girl in the bathtub wasn't tanned that way. The pattern of her suntan didn't fit the costume. The dead girl never worked for you, Hall. Okay, you're right, Carter. No use trying to bluff any longer. No, you fool! I told you while I was dancing I'd split with you if you'd stick with me. I was giving you a chance to You'd make have some... given him the same treatment you gave Rosita the first chance you got. I've got a treatment for all of you if you try to stop me. A lead treatment. Under this veil that's draped over my right hand, I'm holding a gun aimed at Miss Bowen's back. Can I let her have it, Nick? Not if you want Miss Bowen to live. She's going to leave with me. And if any of you try to follow her, she gets shot. So if you want me bad enough to have her killed, come right ahead. Patsy slowly puts her hands up as the dancing girl reveals a new use for a veil. Nick hesitates as the two climb down off the platform. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now for the conclusion of The Case of the Candidate's Corpse, today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. With her veil-covered revolver pressed firmly against Patsy's back, the dancing girl moves toward the rear of the tent. Keep away from me if you want a live secretary, Mr. Carter. You heard her, so help it's me. It's all up to you. If you don't follow me, she'll be all right. Toss me your car keys, Harry. Ah, uh, now look. Be quick about it. Okay. Now... Lift up the side wall of the tent, Miss Bowen. Lift up the what? The tent canvas. Lift it up so we can get under the tent. Oh, okay. There. <sighs> Higher, you dope. I can't. That's as high as it goes. All right, hold it steady while I get under it. Don't you... <laughs> hey, hey, I'm going in. You've got me, have you, by your little son? Oh. <laughs> Maddie, Maddie, Let's hold the canvas up off so I can get a hold of it. Right, Nick. Now, watch out, Patsy. Don't let it. Get okay, right. I'm going. I'm hurting Mr. Carter before she kills somebody. All right, Patsy, you can relax. I've got her gun. Yeah, yeah. and I've got her. That's what you think. Why, I'm Oh, no, you it. won't. Now shut up and behave yourself. Are you all right, Patsy? I guess so. A couple of sore spots, but that's all. Knocking her over with your foot when she bent down to get under the tent wall was fast thinking, Patsy. Remind me to tell you later what a smart girl you are. Why, thank you. She's Nick. not so hot. If I hadn't been off balance, I'd never. All right, all right, Roxanne. Why did you kill Rosita? Rosita had it coming to her. Why? She had me working in this Connie job under her name. Because well, she was working a blackmail racket and wanted an alibi if anything went wrong. And she could claim she was out of town with Hall's show. Yeah. Was Rosita planning to blackmail Mr. Nigel? No. The gang that's trying to keep him from getting elected hired her to come up and sneak in his hotel room while he was out. Uh-huh. She's going to put on a big act about how she was his girlfriend and all that stuff. And when she was through with her act, Nigel would have had to withdraw from the race or face a nasty scandal. That's it, Mr. Carter. And if anything went wrong, Rosita would have taken your place in the show. Why, sure. She could have proved she was doing a dance act at the time she was supposed to have been putting on her act with Nigel. Oh, I get it. Pretty clever. Clever? Disgraceful, you mean? But how did you happen to go to the hotel, Roxanne? I saw a chance to make myself a nice hunk of money. So I decided to sell what I knew to Nigel. Only when you got to the hotel, you found Rosita was already there. Yeah. Yeah. Rosita guessed I was there to double-cross her when we got into a fight. I knew I had to get rid of her, so I hit her over the head with a bookend. And you put her in the bathtub and turned on the water. Yeah. Then I went back to town to see if I could find where she kept her money. But you got there too soon. You mean you got there in time to save me from being the victim of a dirty political plot? It almost looks as if I'm a man of destiny. Save the speech for tonight, Wilton. Uh, yes, my dear. One thing, Mr. Nigel. When you came to my office, why wouldn't you tell me where you got the tip that somebody was plotting to ruin your career? Well, uh, it was an, an anonymous phone call from a, a girl. It was from me, in case I decided to sell out to you. Then why didn't you tell me that, Mr. Nigel? And have Stella know a beautiful young girl had been talking to me on the phone? Dear me, I'd rather go through anything than have that happen. Well, Nick, what about the adventure that new post-war old Dutch cleanser will bring us next week? It's a story about a woman who writes soap operas, Mike, and does a good job of it, until the murder she writes about actually happens in real life. And every suspect has a perfect alibi, too. 
But when the radio actress who plays the part of the murder victim disappears... Oh, wait a minute. This is getting too complicated. <laughs> Not complicated, Mike. Just puzzling. For such a simple murder, it was almost perfect. In fact, it might have been completely perfect if I hadn't bluffed. Well, it sounds wonderful, Nick. What do you call this adventure? I call it the case of the substitute slayer. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time by the Cudahy Packing Company. It is produced and directed by Jock McGregor and is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Matty is played by Ed Latimer. Today's script was written by George B. Anderson. Original music is played by Henry Silvern. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. This is Youth Month, and we are happy to join the salute to young America upon whom our country's future depends. But a salute is not enough. We must see that every American child has the opportunity to become a happy, useful citizen. To do this, we must make our homes our children's homes. We must know their schools, teachers, and playmates. We must provide the kind of recreation that results in physical and mental health. So let's make this month significant by observing its principles the year round, thus assuring our children of an even better America. This is Michael Fitzmaurice saying, when minutes count, Use new post-war old Dutch cleanser. (laughs) 